Congratulations, we have fucked it up again. Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, you are listening to the Brownian Notion. I am Ananya and I am Google. So, what was the last movie you watched? That's a good question. Oh, I think I watched Where Did You Go Bernadette? It's a very fun movie. Okay. Yeah, it has uh, Kate Blanchett in it. I love her to death. And uh, it's about this woman who is very talented and very neurotic in a way and she just uh, gets up and just leaves her family. Is this a new movie or like 90s? It is relatively new. Uh no, it's just 2 years old I think. Okay. Yeah. And then you realize she's not really leaving her family. She is just like that. When she becomes passionate about something, she'll go after it. Nice. And she's a mom, so it's like really fun and all. What is the last movie you have watched? I was trying to think that as well because I knew you would come up come back with the question. I don't <laughs> really remember. I think the last movie I watched was Dune. Oh, movie. you have watched Dune already? Is it good? It depends. The director is is a very favorite director of mine. I will not butcher his name. I can just pronounce his first name Dennis but I can't pronounce his last one so I'll just leave it to that he has directed movies like uh, Arrival uh, mm-hmm. Sicario all of these all of the movies that he has directed up till now I really love um so I I went in with a lot of expectations and and this is something that the producer of the show Anna tells me all the time that that expectations are are a thief of joy and this is what really happened I came oh. went in with a lot of expectations I it was good it wasn't great i feel it was pandering a lot to the fans uh, mm. of the franchise and nothing much happens in the first movie it mm. just it's just a movie to set up the whole universe so to say yeah. so that yeah. the second that movie but that seems to happen with the first movies a lot right or am i mistaken here no no you're absolutely right yes but i think there could be a bit more stuff happening literally nothing happens in the movie Mm. So it's just like world building and like amazing visuals amazing you know uh, character development all those things are very very nice you know the characters very well you get to know a lot of their back stories and politics of the whole universe but hmm. it's just like you feel okay i want to i now want, want to watch the second part immediately it's like it would be very good first episode for a series or a, for a mm-hmm. mini series maybe yeah just to like set up the whole thing yeah but for a movie where you have to wait i don't know for maybe one more year mm-hmm. at least for the next movie it's just like feels a bit meh it's like okay yeah sure everything was very pretty yeah there was and a lot of hype about this movie i have not read the books or anything and i have no idea about what it is but the hype my god and that almost makes me want to run to the theater and just watch it that okay what is it about my god yeah i watched it with a few of my colleagues among all of all of us there was just one guy who had actually read the books uh, watched the previous movies played the video game and he was actually a fan Mm-hmm. and he really liked the movie because yeah he can actually relate to all these things because of nostalgia you know it's the same way if if there's a new harry potter franchise and probably we would just be happy to see the whole you know whole of hogwarts whole of that world being reimagined all over again you know yeah, but for yeah. for somebody who is like uninitiated so to say they'll be like okay what am i really trying to see here or what mm-hmm. am i really what is the point what of what am i getting this? into Yeah, yeah that's true yeah. so kind of moving on from new movies uh, or newish movies what is the movie what is your go to comfort movie this is a very difficult question to answer um i think it really depends on my mood isn't it the same for you it definitely depends on my mood and most of the time what happens to me in usa is i will miss home and so i would watch some good old faithful bollywood movie right which is not too problematic or something Yeah. But with age and the more I learn about things, the problem that has become is everything is a little problematic, and it is right. like, what do you choose really? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a difficult question. Um, yeah. So I can try to answer. So I think my all-time favorite movie, Don't Laugh, is The Lion King, the original one. No, and it's a nice movie. I love that movie. Actually, that was the first movie I've ever seen. Uh-huh. Uh, in a theater, I think seen 
in general as well. Funny story, I cried so much that they had to remove me from the theater because other people were just getting... How much did you cry that they had to remove you from the theater? I wailed and shouted and yeah. Holy shit. Is and... this when the dad dies? Yes, when uh, oh. when Mufasa dies. I cry like crazy. Um, Yeah, so I think that's like the overall favorite movie. But yeah, as, as you said, I also go back to a lot of Bollywood movies that for, for me is probably like uh, Dil Chata Hai, you know? I go yeah. back to Dil Chata a lot. I can probably recite the dialogues, you know? Yeah. Um, that is and one movie which has aged well, I feel. It has aged well. It's not a perfect movie, but at the same time, I think for the time, it was way ahead of its time. That's why it's kind of relevant right now. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And now that I'm talking about it, I feel like after this, I'll probably watch it again. I have not watched it in such a long time. Yeah, you should. It's such a good movie. I, I just really love Farhan Akhtar as a as a director. And he I is. think he's a much better director than he's an actor. I like him as an actor also. I don't know why. Because I feel like, um, and this may not happen to everyone, but I feel like in Bollywood, most people are good looking, right? Which is not yeah. the case in Hollywood, thankfully. Right, right. So when I look at someone playing a character, I'm like, Rithik is playing this well. Not like, okay, this guy, he's an average Joe. He's just so good looking like that becomes a problem. And Farhan is more average looking like a regular guy. So I buy into that whole idea that he's playing a guy. It is not Farhan Akhtar. So... Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I get, get Have you watched I Luck by Chance? I love Luck by Chance. I, I actually, I really like the sensibility of the of the whole family, I feel. Like even yes. Zoya Akhtar. There are movies that, of course, aren't great. But I really mm-hmm. like her sensibility. Like Luck by Chance, even uh, Dil Dhadakne Do or uh, Zindagi Ne Milegi Dubara. Of course, these are no way like perfect movies or movies that you will recommend for the acting chops or anything. It's just like, feel good movies with the sensibility that kind of lacks in in a lot of movies even till date i feel in Bollywood. yeah 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 the thing is i will actually disagree a little bit there i feel like in luck by chance the acting chops were also good because there were no real stars in there yeah right like so i actually thought that was a pretty pretty nice movie and it has held held its ground for a long time yeah i mean when i say that farhan akhtar is a better director than an actor i don't I'm not saying yeah I'm not saying that he's a bad actor or that luck by chance has bad acting I just feel that uh, that comparatively the, comparatively if you look yeah. at like a like a Denzel Washington uh, you yeah know, yeah I Those feel are, like there if I have to pick somebody who can hold her ground uh, against Hollywood actors is probably Konkona. And I don't know if it's my Bengali bias, but... No, uh, yeah. Uh, she is just a powerhouse. Again, I, I cannot really say anything about that because I also have that same bias. But yeah, I, I love Konkona. Um, yeah. Have you watched a directorial debut? I didn't get a chance to watch, uh, oh, watch. Oh man, I was just going to bring that up. So that's amazing that you talked about it. And it is a must watch. Yeah. But even uh, people who are listening and are not Indians necessarily, it has nothing to do with it. Um, yeah. So please watch uh, on Amazon Prime uh, Death in the Gunge. And I have goosebumps whenever I speak about it. It's happening right now. Um, it is this, it hit me. Very few movies have punched me in the gut that hard. Wow. When it finished, when it got over, I was like, what? What just happened? It's It was like that. Like you become this... I don't know, in the end, I just felt helpless and I started just howling, crying like your Lion King thing. But thankfully, I was not in a theater. <laughs> it's such yeah. a brilliant movie. Unfortunately, I've not really gotten around to watch it. But uh, because, you know, uh, such are our lives right now that we kind of try to look at cinema as like a place for escape. Absolutely. Than, yeah. And so, you know, after a long day where maybe work was shitty maybe something else happened it's just very difficult to get into a subject matter which is also hard so at that yes. point it's just yes it's, it's yeah. just easy to watch something which is more light-hearted more fluffy in a way so it's okay i honestly did not think it would be as harsh as it was when i started yeah. watching it uh it was like oh it's a family on a picnic and i'm like man nothing gets more nostalgic than that and then right. <laughs> it just 
Uh, but yes, yes, absolutely watch it when you have the mental space for it. So yes, I, I, that's like really high up on my to watch list. Also, Vikrant Masi is an incredible actor. I have always liked oh, yeah. him. Yeah, but it's it's funny that we talk about all these really incredible movies because a lot of times when Bollywood gets mentioned, especially among my Western friends. they pick out movies that even we wouldn't watch i feel and they would yes as as yeah yeah, as yeah. Like, where do you find these movies and like there are enough good movies to watch but they will somehow find some very weird shit and they'll say <laughs> ha this is so I, funny i don't blame them because have you seen like netflix has some really good movies but it also has like really bad ones yeah so yeah Yeah, I mean, so, I also feel like many people's first introduction into Bollywood who are not Indians are Dilwale Dulhaliya le jayenge. Yes, yes. It's a very weird movie now that you think about it. It is. See, there is of course a, a nostalgia factor, but if you yes, take yes. away the nostalgia, it is a very weird movie to watch in this day and age. You're like, okay, yeah, it's a very different world from us. Like, That's it's what, not standing up to your parents. Yeah. A different level. <laughs> a different level, exactly. Yeah. So uh, that's why the recommendations that we have on the show, mm-hmm. um, especially as as Ananya mentioned, a uh, death in the Kanj. Do check it out if you want to check out uh, Indian movies. That's a very good. Uh, But if you are triggered easily, I would say definitely have the mental space or watch it with okay. somebody. I feel okay. that that's so, gonna be better. So what would be uh, a more safer um, watch? entry movie for mm. for somebody who doesn't really know anything about indian movies ah, i would go back to your suggestion actually dil chahta hai is a very safe entry movie it's fun right. it's road trippy um b- bandering with your friends fighting getting back it's 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 so wholesome like it just it's makes so you wholesome it just warm makes your heart, heart so warm yeah yeah But yeah I I have one more recommendation which is also a very favorite movie of mine. It's also so heartwarming and also stars one of my favorite actors who unfortunately passed away last year. It's The Lunchbox. I love that movie. Oh yeah, it's such a good movie. It is such a good movie. Yeah. yeah. Actually, on that I would say again another movie uh, with Irfan Khan in it, in it is uh, a great uh, starter movie which is Piku. Yes. Again, my Bengali bias comes in, but it is yes. such a nice, such a wholesome movie. Such a wholesome movie. It's it's well, also a very good movie to kind of get a little bit into the whole Bengali culture, so that yeah, you yeah, know yeah. that how a generalization of Indian culture is so weird because Bengali culture or or culture from any region is actually very very different. Very different, yeah. very different from the whole amalgamation that gets portrayed in the Western media. I feel. Yeah, like I feel, and I am digressing a little bit. It's like South India has a certain culture, North right. India has a certain culture. If you really right. have to generalize, but yeah. imagine in in a relatively smaller country compared to say, I guess USA, it is just so different. Like North India is just so different from Bengal, and South is so different from the rest of the country. It's just right. it's bizarre to me that how we all just coexist. Yes, it is bizarre. Uh, yeah. Just one thing, I don't think India is a small country. It's uh, it's fairly big, but no, yeah, no, relatively to like USA. Yeah, uh, but USA doesn't yeah. have like so many people, right? That's true. That's actually yeah. true. Population wise, we are just on another level. So. On another level, I so. But what you said at the end was like hitting the nail on the head. I think there was a there was a very uh, famous quote by the Economist. I think if I'm not mistaken it, it said like india is a continent masquerading as a country yes. so that just tells yeah. you like all of these states all of these regions are countries kind of in their own right so yeah. if you try to generalize all of europe for example it will be mm-hmm. just like you will not get the taste of anything it's like exactly know. yeah 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 absolutely i yeah. agree with you anyway that makes sense Yes, so if you're trying to get into Bollywood movies, we suggest watching these. Uh, most yeah. of them are on Netflix, and yeah. we will leave them in our show notes. So definitely check these out. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So having said that, we are done with the main topic for today. So yeah. let's move on to the next section. Do we again recommend something for the recommendations? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this whole episode is a recommendation. But if you want to recommend a book, I won't stop you. 
recommend a book okay or food or whatever yeah okay no i will recommend a children's book actually oh, nice. i yeah i read a book last month called a monster calls do you know about this book no yeah it was just so heart wrenching and wholesome and heartwarming at the same time it's a it's a book by patrick ness i think he writes a lot of things for for children it's a story of a boy who's parents are divorced he lives with his mom in the united kingdom in england and his dad lives in the states and his mom is actually diagnosed with like a terminal illness and it's his oh, way of coping with his mom dying the fact of his mom dying and how he and this is basically this is not a spoiler because it's kind of in the description of it mm-hmm. he actually invents a monster to just cope with oh, um, my. with this heartbreak like as an adult you just feel that because we have all been kids you know and we have felt things maybe not this not to such an extent but we have felt things that were beyond our control and we wanted to control them so badly it just feels like somebody finally understood the child in me yeah i was just so i cried like the whole night after reading it i think my throat uh, got caught up when you were describing a little bit and i was like <clears throat> <laughs> this is quite such a nice book i was like oh. yeah so is it like a kids book or is it a kids book for adults kind of situation no it's a it's a it's a uh, kids book it's a young adult kids book i think it's that's, not meant that's yeah. nice. i mean you could of course read it as an adult but yeah yeah it is written in a way that uh, that like young adults can Uh, or or like uh, like late teenagers can really enjoy it that's amazing yeah we will again leave this in the show notes if you're interested do you have a recommendation um uh, for some reason when you mentioned uh, death uh, and kids and stuff i thought of the new season of modern love okay. on amazon so yes. for people who have no idea Uh, Modern Love is basically a column of small real life love stories on New York Times one of the only reasons i subscribe um and they have a podcast and now they have a show which released last year and this time the second uh, season came out i personally liked it more because it goes into the depth of relationships in such an intricate way so if that is your jam every episode is a different story definitely right, right. watch it right. it's amazing Yeah I've I've watched the first season and it is amazing it's like there's certain shows i feel like i have to really slow down to savor yes. it yeah yeah and it is one of those like i really don't want to rush with them i yeah. i want to have enough time so that i can really think about it afterwards yeah very yeah. good recommendation mm-hmm. i must say so that brings us to the end of the episode yeah we are very happy that you joined us again i don't know what's wrong with you but uh we are very happy and grateful and thankful <laughs> and all of the good things do join us again because we'll again be grateful and happy and all of the good things <laughs> and uh, write to us, tell us your recommendations yes. what should we watch yes, what should right, we read right. what should write we write us write us write to us we yeah we're looking for validation online that's what all the that's time why... that's why we did this exactly this is a yeah. vanity project <laughs> if you want anyway. to uh, be a guest and you have a story to tell please let us know and we are open yes. yeah that's it bye ciao hydration is very important in life <laughs> my passion is hydration <laughs>